All right. Uh, welcome again, everybody who's joined us today. It's two minutes past, so we'll get started. Uh, today's webinar is a joint presentation by AWS and Aviatrix. Uh, today's topic is AWS Control Tower and how Aviatrix uh, combines with Control Tower uh, to serve as the network factory. Our speakers today uh, are uh, Abhishek Bhatt. I'm a principal solutions architect uh, with Aviatrix. We also have uh, Nevas Durairaj and Anand Gaitunde, uh, who are solution architects with AWS. Uh, a quick note uh, before we get into the agenda, uh, the slide deck and the recording of the webinar will be sent out in an email uh, after we finish. Our uh, quickly uh, a brief agenda for uh, for today's webinar. Uh, we'll start out with uh, covering uh, AWS Control Tower, the multi-account environment, uh, the best practices there, and we'll then talk about uh, networking challenges in a multi-cloud environment, multi-account environment, um, and uh, we'll then talk about solutions for Control Tower in the AWS marketplace and specifically the network orchestration solution with Aviatrix. Uh, we will follow that up uh, with the details of the integrated solution that is available on the marketplace. Uh, this is the Control Tower plus Aviatrix solution. Uh, we'll do a quick demo and towards the end, uh, open up for Q&A. Uh, and with that, I'll hand it over to Nivas. Thanks, Abhishek. Awesome. And thanks everyone for joining us today. Before we can dive into what AWS Control Tower is, I thought it would be best to cover the multi-account approach and um, talk to you guys how it helps. With the multi-account approach, teams have their own accounts and resources are separated by accounts. You can think of these accounts as resource containers, um, basically mechanisms for resource isolation. And um, there are a few reasons why this is important. Um, Abhishek, next slide, please. Thanks. So there are a few reasons why this is advantageous. If you look at billing, it's, it's much easier if you can look at a single account with resources and aggregate costs for a team. And if you have multiple teams within a single account, this becomes a little complicated. It's not to say that it can't be done, it can, but it's far easier with um, if you have that single team to single account correspondence. With team management, here you can avoid stepping on each other's toes. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you had Team Blue, and, and Team Blue is prioritizing cost reductions, and they shut down a database. Then Team Red uh, might unfortunately be impacted because they were using their database that particular database in a production cluster. This could have been avoided if Team Red had its own account. With account limits, again, you don't need to worry about raising the account limits if you've scaled up with multiple accounts. And another reason that's not listed on this slide is compliance. You, it's best to have regulated workloads within their own accounts, and that can help you achieve SOC 2, HIPAA, and other uh, regulatory uh, rules. Um, with reducing security blast radiuses, um, if you, in the event of a bad actor or security credentials being exposed, you can, um, you know, this would limit the impact of the security lapse. So with, with that, um, this is the reason why we introduced AWS Control Tower. AWS Control Tower is an AWS service which sets up a secure and compliant multi-account environment at scale. Um, it provides a prescriptive guidance and enables you to provision a well-architected multi-account environment. And this helps a lot of our customers because they can quickly provision new accounts and operate their environment securely. So what does AWS Control Tower do? And um, so AWS Control Tower sets up a multi-account environment. It 
orchestrates several core services. This includes AWS organizations to manage your accounts and set up your account structure. AWS service catalog to standardize on your products. So anytime you spin up a new account, your customers will have standardized products and portfolios. CloudFormation stack sets, single sign-on so that you can access and federate into the different accounts and more services. So when AWS Control Tower is initially set up, it sets up a core OU and a custom OU. And these OUs are underneath the AWS organization's environment. Underneath the core OU, you will find a log archive account and the audit account. The audit account is equivalent to the security account. With the log archive account, um, this is the, uh, the account that will host the central S3 bucket to contain all of your CloudTrail and AWS config logs. So any new member account that's spun up by AWS Control Tower will autom automatically receive CloudTrail and AWS config, and those logs will be sent over to the log archive account. So all activity is tracked. With the audit and security accounts, um, here any security notifications will be aggregated and you will also have the Amazon config aggregated hosted in this audit account. And next slide, please. So what are the control tower benefits? Um, AWS Control Tower sets up an automated landing zone. It provides guardrails to secure your environment. It sets up Account Factory, a service catalog product, to provision new accounts. Organizes a central dashboard for visibility. Provides federation to accounts through SSO. Sets up the log, archive, and audit accounts. And um, provides built-in monitoring and notifications. And the last benefit is something that sometimes goes a little unnoticed, but it's about the automatic updates. The neat thing about Control Tower is that now you can automatically update your environment with just a click of a button. So let's dive a little bit deeper into the AWS Control Tower Account Factory um, and some of its features. So with Account Factory, it is a service catalog product. So what that means then is that you can use service catalog CLI and API accounts um, commands to provision new accounts. Um, you can also provision new accounts directly from the AWS console. Um, as soon as a new account is provisioned with Account Factory, this will enforce the account baselines and guardrails. You can also choose to use Account Factory to enroll existing accounts. And when I say enroll, I mean bringing an existing account underneath Control Tower governance. And let's talk a little bit more about the guardrails. In AWS Control Tower, we have two kinds of guardrails. We have um, Preventive and detective guardrails. The preventive guardrails are based on service control policies. And what that means then is that they apply at the entire account. With the detective guardrails, these are AWS config rules, so they apply at the regional level. And with both of these guardrails, they prevent and detect policy violations. And um, examples of a uh, detective guardrail, especially in networking, uh, something that you would consider very important, is identifying when a resource is connected to the internet. And, and so that will immediately show up on the control tower dashboard. So if a resource has its ports open to RDP or SSH, you'll be able to immediately identify what is the resource and which member account it's coming from within the control tower environment from the dashboard. All right, and, and let's talk a little about the lifecycle events. And this is actually an integral uh, feature of the Aviatrix networking factory. Um, lifecycle events are notifications that take place in an AWS control tower environment. Whenever a new account is provisioned, guardrails are applied, or an account has moved between an OU, 
organizational unit, you will receive a life cycle event. Some of our customers have actually been quite creative with its usage. For example, as soon as a new account has been provisioned, this triggers the create account lifecycle event, and this lets customers set up predefined infrastructure with service catalog or um, a cloud formation stack sets. And you'll actually see this described in depth with the Aviatrix networking factory that Abhishek and Anand will talk more about. So as you can see, AWS Control Tower gives you a starting point and prescriptive guidance on how you can set up your multi-account environment. But customers want more and they want to continue building on. They want to have scale and visibility into their accounts. They want to automate their operations, add additional guardrails, and centralize their security and networking operations. And so you can see that um, the, the three areas of focus, cloud, security, and network operations. So to assist our customers, we created the solutions for AWS Control Tower in AWS Marketplace. On this site, you can find solutions that are directly integrated into AWS Control Tower and can enable with a few clicks. A very important and useful example for customers is Aviatrix. Next slide, please, Abhishek. <laughs> Thanks. So with this, with the Aviatrix, uh, cloud network platform, um, this solution will automatically set up and orchestrate a secure and scalable network environment on AWS Control Tower. Anand and Abhishek will actually expand on this and show you how it, it works in a Control Tower environment. And with this, I, um, I'm gonna hand off to Anand, who will talk to us about networking in a multi-account environment. All right, uh, thank you, Nivas. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think uh, we talked about some of the control tower benefits, right? So once customers set up this control tower environment and create that multi-account structure for your application teams and business units across the organization, the next thing is to make that environment usable and uh, you know interconnecting that environment so that those applications can talk to each other. So setting up that network topology inside your control tower environment becomes an important step. So uh, in multi-account environments, it is typical to have multiple VPCs to support your different workloads and applications. And VPC peering is one of the initial ways AWS provided. So you can interconnect those VPCs uh, so that those applications can talk to each other. And VPC peering also supports setting up connections across your multiple accounts and then across uh, you know, VPCs which are across regions uh, as well. However, it's important to keep in mind though that it does not support transitive routing, which means let's say you have a uh, you know, VPC peering connection from VPC A to VPC B and another connection from VPC B to VPC C. However, still A and C cannot talk to each other. So, which means you require a lot of point-to-point -point connections as shown in this graphic and uh, you know, which means you, know, you require that full mesh to interconnect multiple VPCs, right? So uh, imagine the complexity of this as the number of accounts um, grow and number of VPCs increase. Also for uh, hybrid cloud environments, uh, you, know, we, you need to create those site-to-site uh, -site VPN connections from your on-premises data centers to each of these VPCs. So again, a lot of point-to-point -point connections there. And even if let's say you are using the AWS Direct Connect um, for uh, having that dedicated network uh, connection from your on-premises to the AWS cloud, you will still require multiple uh, you know, private virtual interfaces uh, to make those connections possible. So as we add more VPCs into this environment, you need to create more of those VPN tunnels, you need to add additional uh, uh, you know, Direct Connect uh, private tips. So it increases the complexity and configuration requirements. So keeping in mind this scaling challenge, AWS came up with AWS Transit Gateway Service, which provides a highly scalable and a highly available infrastructure, which connects VPCs and on-premises networks through a central uh, hub. So uh, essentially this simplifies your network from a mesh design to a hub and spoke design and puts an end to complex peering relationships. So Abhishek, if you can just click next. 
So essentially, uh, AWS Transit Gateway is now considered the best practice for most multi-account, multi-VPC environments, right? And essentially, you can now connect thousands of VPCs across those accounts, um, um, and allowing you to also uh, add, allow that Transit Gateway to become a centralized gateway for your on-premises connections as well. Especially when you are talking about hybrid cloud environments comprising of multiple on-premises data centers or multiple remote sites, all those VPN connections and uh, you know direct connects can then terminate on Transit Gateway and it can act as a centralized hub. So essentially, uh, you know, uh, uh, some of the benefits it also provides is uh, now you can control or provide you know network segmentation. So let's say you have a development account VPC um, and a testing account VPC, and they, you want them to talk to each other, but not to the production account VPC. So you can have that kind of control over the network traffic through uh, the route tables in uh, Transit Gateway. Uh, last but not the least, uh, again, Transit Gateway being highly scalable infrastructure, it supports up to 50 GPPS per VPC connection, which means it allows you to have workloads with high networking requirements as well. So as customers have adopted this best practice of utilizing AWS Transit Gateway, uh, they are still looking for better manageability of such complex environments. Right. So we were talking about the AWS control tower and the account factory, which will be used to provision new accounts. So when you do that and you create additional VPCs into those accounts, uh, now you need to uh, make sure you have you perform the manual steps of connecting those VPCs back to the transit gateway. You also need to make sure that those connections are made in such a manner that your network segmentation requirements are intact and you know followed uh, followed properly. Again, the routing configurations also needs to be done manually. And then uh, another daunting task you have uh, in front of you is to have, uh, you know, all the VPCs that you create should have non-overlapping cider blocks vis-a-vis uh, -vis rest of the VPCs that already exist in your multi-account structure. So that becomes an important consideration when you are, you know, having uh, such complex environment. Uh, also, another thing, uh, to keep in mind is when you're talking about multi-account structure, you want to make sure you are able to share network resources. Something that you do with the AWS Resource Access Manager, which provides this capability to share resources across uh, accounts within your AWS organization. But then you have to make sure uh, you, know, you can uh, do that securely. And if you need additional granular control of how you want to share those network resources, that becomes an additional step that you perform in your multi-account environment. So this is where, so imagine if you had an automated solution which can uh, you know, help you take care of that as you add new accounts into your environment and new VPCs are created in your environment, right? And that is where the Aviatrix platform comes into play uh, and it plays the role of a network factory uh, within the control tower and help scale in a multi-account environment to configure, manage, and coordinate AWS resources automatically, right? So, uh, Abhishek, if you can go to the next slide. So, uh, this uh, Avatrix Cloud Network Platform, which is now, uh, you know, uh, integrated with Control Tower, it uses the AWS APIs to program those native, uh, you know, network infrastructure constructs, abstracting some of the complexity, right? And this integration with Control Tower is uh, done with some of the architecture best practices around networking, identity, and access management, and security. So with that, I will hand over to Abhishek to kind of dive in deep, talk about some of the Aviatrix capabilities, the capabilities of the cloud network platform itself, and how it's been integrated with Control Tower to help our customers uh, you know, manage their multi-account environment and the network topology. Over to you, Abhishek. Uh, thanks, Nevas and Anand. Uh, thanks for setting it up. Uh, before I get into the Aviatrix slides, just want to remind everyone we have a Q&A uh, panel, so feel free to ask any questions you have, uh, and we have folks who will respond to those questions. Um, so as Nivas and uh, uh, Anand mentioned, uh, there are multiple challenges, especially as uh, enterprises grow their footprint uh, in the cloud. And before we get into uh, the uh, integrated solution. I wanted to take a step back and 
uh, set a baseline, briefly cover what the Aviatrix platform is and uh, what the different capabilities are. Uh, so we've tried to address uh, the main networking and security challenges of enterprises in the cloud, and we bring uh, enterprise class visibility to the cloud. Uh, so quickly to, to understand the solution and some of the components involved, the Aviatrix platform essentially consists of uh, the Aviatrix controller, uh, which is a instance, just an easy to instance in your environment. So this is not operated as a SaaS service. This is actually deployed in your AWS account, your environment. The Aviatrix controller uh, becomes the central uh, control plane for your entire cloud networking footprint. Uh, and it manages and configures all the native uh, cloud constructs. And additionally, it also configures and uh, manages Aviatrix gateways. These Aviatrix gateways are again instances in the cloud uh, and these constitute the Aviatrix data plane. Uh, and I'll briefly talk about uh, uh, the benefits of using the Aviatrix data plane. Uh, the key here is from a centralized control perspective, uh, you're never expected to uh, manually configure uh, any of the routing constructs in AWS. So uh, as Anand mentioned, uh, Aviatrix takes care of uh, configuring, say, the VPC route tables, connecting uh, your uh, central hub, your transit gateway uh, to an on-prem using a DX gateway. Uh, it programs uh, the transit gateway itself. Uh, so Aviatrix can talk to all the native constructs and the Aviatrix data plane. Uh, what we also bring uh, fundamentally to routing in the cloud is uh, dynamic routing. So for instance, uh, uh, connectivity between on-prem and say workload VPCs, uh, you connect your on-prem using BGP to the AWS Transit Gateway and the seeders that are advertised from on-prem need to be configured manually in the VPCs to find their way back to on-prem. Aviatrix brings route dynamism uh, to this environment, which means it actually takes care of programming these routes that are advertised by on-prem uh, into those VPCs. Uh, the other thing I'll mention here is uh, we are also, Aviatrix is also a official uh, Terraform provider. So everything can be driven using a UI exposed by the Aviatrix controller but can also be provisioned uh, using our Terraform provider. The other big piece uh, that we have focused on is, uh, is service insertion. Uh, customers we talk to uh, have two primary challenges that they're trying to solve. Uh, they're trying to solve, of course, the networking challenge uh, you know, of connecting uh, on-prem data centers into the cloud, uh, connecting multiple VPCs spread across multiple accounts, uh, they are also trying to uh, uh, make a multi-region uh, network backbone, uh, and we we solve all those challenges. Uh, but we also bring uh, security into the cloud, um, and we have a solution where we partner with leading uh, firewall vendors like Fortinet, Checkpoint, and Palo Alto, uh, and integrate that with the uh, transit gateway. So in this composite model, we, you can bring cloud firewalls into your cloud environment. So no longer do you have to send all your cloud traffic uh, to, to on-prem just for inspection. You can actually inspect all your traffic in the cloud and we help customers to, uh, to stand up these firewalls in the cloud depending on whichever vendor is your preference. Uh, and then more importantly, uh, we allow very simply to put these firewalls in line of traffic uh, that needs to be inspected. Uh, and there are a lot of uh, fine grained controls uh, in terms of being able to inspect, you know, east west traffic, uh, potentially going from one VPC to another, um, north south traffic, uh, that is traffic between the cloud and on prem. Uh, 
Um, you can also choose to inspect traffic originating from the cloud destined to the internet. The third uh, 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 issue that we solve for customers is, is visibility. So uh, we have a dedicated product for cloud visibility and operations called Aviatrix Copilot. Uh, and what that brings is a rich enterprise grade visibility uh, into the cloud. So as you can see uh, on this slide and uh, I have additional slides, uh, it brings these capabilities that teams have been used to uh, working with in, in on-prem physical environments. So on this slide, what you see is a dynamic topology map of your cloud footprint. So this actually builds out, automatically discovers and builds out the network uh, topology. And we expose a lot of operational troubleshooting tools where you can actually interact with this topology. So you can, for instance, pick two endpoints on this topology and have the platform verify the connectivity, the latency and things like those uh, across your network. Uh, we also expose uh, rich uh, flow data uh, from your environment. Uh, and what you see here is the detailed analysis of, uh, of, that, uh, of that traffic. So in your cloud environment, you can easily see uh, the traffic volume and the sources and destinations that the traffic uh, is flowing in between. Um, uh, there are other uh, dashboards that uh, give you a uh, quick analysis of, you know, top talkers, uh, analysis around, uh, you know, geography uh, and things like those. Um, you can also uh, use tagging to quickly filter any of these screens down. So for instance, uh, in a multi-account environment, uh, you can choose to create tags for accounts or for OUs, and then simply by leveraging those tags, you can see any of these views filtered down uh, to the account or OU level. Uh, and just a quick slide here. Uh, this is uh, these are some launch announcements from the last uh, reInvent. Uh, in 2019, uh, Aviatrix partners with uh, a lot of uh, AWS services. We were launch partners, for instance, for uh, for ingress routing. Uh, on the left bottom screen, uh, you see Aviatrix listed as a launch partner for the global accelerator. Uh, so, for example, if you're building a connectivity between on-prem uh, and AWS, uh, you can use the Aviatrix controller to simply uh, choose to use the global accelerator and the controller goes behind the scenes and uh, provisions a global accelerator endpoint so that your glo global workforce can access and get into uh, the AWS cloud uh, connecting to the AWS edge. Uh, we were also launch uh, partners uh, 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 in the network security uh, domain. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is uh, because what Aviatrix offers is a comprehensive networking and security platform. And there are a bunch of use cases, solutions that our customers are using us for. Um, so on this slide, uh, what we'll now start to do is uh, jump into the specifics of the uh, integrated solution uh, with the uh, control, uh, control tower. Um, the one thing, and I'll show you guys the actual Aviatrix controller UI. Uh, the one fundamental choice, product design choice we made was the Aviatrix controller is multi-tenant by design. Uh, and that is why it fit really well into the control tower uh, environment. What I mean by multi-tenant is uh, we have a concept of onboarding uh, accounts on the Aviatrix controller. And essentially uh, that process allows the Aviatrix controller, which keep in mind is just an EC2 instance to actually provision and manage infrastructure across multiple accounts. So the onboarding, onboarding process uh, essentially sets up uh, IAM roles and it builds a cross account trust relationship which then allows the controller to 
to manage your infrastructure that may be deployed you know across hundreds of uh, aws accounts um, so it, for the specific solution uh, as you can see here uh, this is a aws uh, organization uh, structure right here uh, on the left, you have the control tower master account. This is where uh, your control tower environment is uh, installed. Um, aligning with the multi-account uh, uh, best practice, it makes a lot of sense and we see enterprises do this all the time. Um, they will set up dedicated accounts uh, for say their networking infrastructure or their security infrastructure. Um, that helps, as Nevas mentioned, you know, for various reasons, uh, including billing, but it also becomes a logical separation uh, when there are uh, team boundaries. So there could be a security team that owns all the infrastructure uh, in security accounts, and then a network team that's responsible for all the network infrastructure uh, deployed in, uh, in the network account. Uh, so in this uh, uh, slide, you'll see uh, the best recommendation to set up a dedicated infrastructure OU inside which you can then create uh, dedicated accounts for, for network and security infrastructure. On the right is basically your business. Uh, you know, these could be different business units, different teams, or however you would like to partition uh, your AWS accounts. Um, so the solution, uh, the prerequisite for the solution is that you have an Aviatrix controller um, that is installed in your environment. Uh, like I said, it's a single instance. You can spin it up very quickly from the AWS marketplace. Uh, we have metered options uh, which allow you to subscribe and, and spin it up in your own account. Um, the solution requires, uh, is based on a cloud formation template. Uh, which essentially uh, deploys a Lambda, which you see on the left. This is installed in the control tower master account. And its purpose is to listen for the new account creation uh, lifecycle event that Nevas mentioned. So the Lambda listens for uh, new account creation events from control tower. And when it detects a, a new uh, event, it makes API calls to the Aviatrix controller to give you baseline network infrastructure in the newly created account. The goal of this solution is that when new accounts are created in control tower, you get a baseline network infrastructure deployed in that new account as well, connected to your shared uh, network uh, backbone uh, so that uh, the end user can then start to uh, spin up uh, you know, EC2 instances and have the network connectivity uh, into the rest of the environment. So the Lambda listens for uh, uh, account creation events, makes uh, API calls to the Aviatrix controller. Uh, the Aviatrix controller takes care of uh, sharing uh, the shared infrastructure. So for instance, the AWS Transit Gateway, which is shared across all your OUs and all your accounts. It takes care of uh, automatically sharing the transit gateway across all newly created accounts. And it gives you that base networking infrastructure. Uh, and what that means is uh, it creates a VPC uh, in the newly created account. Uh, and there are some customizations available around the structure of those VPCs, for instance, um, you know, how many private and public route tables do you need? Um, how many AZs uh, do you need the subnets to be in? Uh, things like those. So it automatically creates that VPC and the structure for you. So it will set up the subnets, the route tables, um, you know, the internet gateway, all of that for you. And it will ensure that it actually picks a VPC seeder that is non-overlapping is unique within your environment. So because of the centralized control, uh, the Aviatrix platform has a global view of all uh, VPCs deployed in your environment. And the Lambda actually takes care of looking at all those VPCs and ensuring that the seeder picked 
for the new VPC is non-overlapping and unique across your uh, entire footprint. Uh, what it then does is it connects your VPC uh, to the AWS Transit Gateway as well. And now essentially the new account has a baseline infrastructure, network infrastructure, which means it has a VPC that's already connected into your environment and it is connected based on your network architecture. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, what I mean by that. Now, uh, alternatively, uh, as I mentioned uh, on my previous slide, uh, Aviatrix, besides the controller, also has a data plane, which is uh, the Aviatrix gateways. And you can deploy the same topology using the Aviatrix uh, uh, gateways as well. So what this would do is essentially replace the AWS Transit gateway with the Aviatrix Transit network and you can use the same workflow to connect newly created VPCs into the Aviatrix uh, Transit. Uh, there are advantages of the Aviatrix data plane uh, in terms of visibility, scale, and performance. Uh, if you're interested in exploring any of these, uh, please reach out to the Aviatrix team. Uh, and the key aspect of uh, the Aviatrix data plane, as I mentioned, is visibility. So uh, the previous slide where we showed uh, detailed traffic analysis uh, of your cloud traffic, that is based on the Aviatrix data plane. So the Aviatrix data plane exports detailed flow information that is then consumed by the Aviatrix platform to give you a detailed analysis. Uh, so with that, let's uh, jump into a quick demo. And what I wanted to show you guys uh, before we jump into the demo is this is the Aviatrix controller UI. Uh, this is what it looks like when you would spin it up uh, from the AWS marketplace. And the two things I would like to show you guys is uh, what I mean by multi-tenant environment. So the Aviatrix controller has an account onboarding process. And as you can see, I've onboarded multiple AWS accounts here. The Aviatrix platform is a multi-cloud uh, platform. So you can uh, onboard you know, AWS accounts and uh, other supported cloud providers as well. But this, once you onboard the accounts uh, into the Aviatrix controller, the Aviatrix controller now sort of has a global view of these accounts. Uh, and what the controller can do in these accounts is controlled by AIM policy, which can be customized as needed. Um, so, so for example, the global view of uh, the Aviatrix controller into the onboarded accounts, uh, and this is a example of that, where the Aviatrix controller is now aware of all the VPCs that exist across all those accounts, right? Uh, and this is a cumulative view of all the VPCs, as you can see here, uh, these are different AWS accounts. Uh, and this gives you a global view of all the VPCs that exist. This is the view that the integrated solution relies on to determine uh, a unique seeder uh, for uh, the newly created VPC. And uh, to orchestrate and program the TGW, uh, AWA, AWS TGW, uh, as you can see on the left, uh, our menus are solution-based. So you can use this workflow to manage and orchestrate your transit gateway. In fact, uh, you can create your AWS transit gateway from the uh, Aviatrix con console itself. And again, every step you see in the workflow, you can actually choose which AWS account you want that infrastructure to be deployed in. So for instance, you would expect the transit gateway, the centralized transit gateway to be installed in a, in a network uh, focused account. Um, what we bring to the transit gateway is, uh, is network segmentation uh, and Aviatrix calls it security domains. Uh, but this allows you to build uh, segments for your uh, uh, environment. And you could do things like uh, map uh, network segments to 
uh, essentially OUs, right? So every o, OU gets its own network segment and based on connection policies, you can actually decide which ne network segments are allowed to talk to each other. So this improves your uh, security posture. It allows you to uh, very simply isolate segments that don't need to talk to other workloads uh, or uh, on the flip side, uh, you can set up connection policies that allow these segments to potentially talk to each other or talk to shared services uh, in your environment. Uh, for the AWS Transit Gateway, uh, we extend the programming and orchestration to connection uh, uh, with on-prem as well. And if you see, here are the options that allow you to do that. So the TGW VPN is when you want to uh, create a VPN, site-to-site -site VPN connection between the TGW uh, and say a on-prem router. And you can see it's completely UI driven. You specify uh, the right parameters uh, and you can build uh, uh, this VPN connection. And keep in mind, we bring the network segmentation to these VPN connections as well. So if you want to control what uh, on-prem resources can uh, access in the cloud, you can do that using network segmentation. And here's the global accelerator that I mentioned. Simply by checking this box, you will enable a global accelerator in your AWS account uh, and the VPN then starts to leverage the accelerator. Um, so very quickly, uh, we'll demo the actual solution. Um, so I'm just logging in. This is my uh, AWS Control Tower master account. Uh, like I said, the solution comes as a uh, as a cloud formation template that's installed, uh, and it sets up a lambda in the master account, which listens to new account creation events and then uh, executes the remaining workflow, making API calls to the Aviatrix controller. Uh, so what we'll do here is, in the interest of time, uh, not actually create a new account, but what we'll do is we will simulate a new account creation process using uh, Lambda test events. So what I have here is, uh, what I have here is the CloudWatch create managed account event. This is generated by the AWS control tower service. And this is what triggers the workflow. So here, what you can see is uh, this will simulate a new account uh, being created uh, the new account uh, ID is this. We gave it a name of archives, um, and this will trigger uh, the workflow. So let's actually trigger the workflow uh, and see uh, what it actually does. So the advantage of uh, using the Aviatrix controller again is your single pane of glass. As that workflow gets executed in the uh, in the background, uh, you can actually see that account now being added to the Aviatrix controller. You can now see um, the uh, VPC being created and being attached to your uh, centralized AWS Transit Gateway. So as the Lambda executes in the background, what we'll see is the archive account pop up here. So right now I have three AWS accounts and we should uh, see the archive account pop here. Uh, and then what we'll see is uh, we'll actually see a VPC, the newly created VPC in the new account also pop up here. And what you will also be able to verify uh, from uh, this page is that VPC being connected to your uh, centralized transit gateway. So let's see. So right there, so that new archive account that was just created, of course, we simulated it for this presentation, uh, is now added to the Aviatrix controller. In the background, it created um, uh, IAM role and a cross account trust relationship uh, for the Aviatrix controller. Uh, what we'll be able to see here is that a new VPC in that new archive account has been created. And keep uh, note that uh, it picked a VPC seeder uh, that is uh, unique uh, in this environment. And so in this case, you can see it picked 10.2 because as we can see from the global view that 
uh, 10.0 uh, and I think 10.1 was also taken. So it sort of detected all the VPCs, looked over all those VPCs and picked a unique seeder for you. Uh, and the last piece that it did was it actually connected that VPC seeder to your centralized standard gateway. And so this gives you the command and control in terms of uh, attaching the VPC exactly where you want in the transit gateway. Uh, as the central administrator, you can decide what kind of segmentation your environment needs, uh, but you also stay agile in that users in your enterprise can request for new accounts uh, and get uh, VPCs that uh, are connected to your uh, enterprise environment uh, very quickly. Uh, the only thing I'll mention here is uh, before we wrap up and get into Q&A is that uh, we're looking at uh, extending this workflow also as a service catalog item, which means uh, as of now, this generates a single VPC. Uh, this behavior can be customized, but for ongoing requests, the same workflow can be triggered uh, from service catalog. So if you have a user or team that wants to request additional VPCs, they can use a service catalog item to trigger the same workflow. Um, and I think that's all I had, uh, folks. So. Um, this is a good time for any Q&A. Uh, we can answer any questions you have on the solution. If you're interested, obviously, in anything that you've seen, um, the network segmentation, the security offering, the visibility, uh, please reach out to Aviatrix and we can uh, set up a quick demonstration. Yes, the, also a request that you fill out the poll while we're doing the Q&A. Uh, there were a couple of really good questions that came across and maybe we can pop up a few of these and, and answer them live to everybody. Um, there were some questions about how this integration, whether it was a CloudFormation or Terraform scripts. And I think you talked a little bit that after the question was answered, but maybe you can give a quick answer there, uh, uh, Abhishek, on, on um, the combination of CloudFormation and Terraform here. Right, so I, I see the question. So the solution is available on the marketplace, so you guys can actually uh, try it out. Uh, keep in mind the prerequisite is that you have a Aviatrix controller in your environment. Uh, again, the Aviatrix controller can be very quickly spun up from the AWS marketplace. Uh, the solution itself is published as a cloud formation template. So once you have the Aviatrix controller uh, and a control tower environment set up, you can go to your control tower master account and deploy that cloud formation template. We also have a solution brief uh, and you send out a link to that solution brief so that you guys can follow the sequence precisely. Okay, and then there were a couple of questions, so I'll bring it up and, and maybe Nevis, you can address this. Uh, there seemed to be a little bit of confusion between uh, what control tower is and what uh, transit gateway is. Um, and, and maybe they got the answer as they watched the presentation, but maybe you can address that one. Sure, I, I will. AWS control tower sets up a multi-account environment. So it sets up your cloud foundational environment and once this is set up, then you think about how do I create and provision my networking constructs? And the networking constructs, um, that's where Transit Gateway, the Aviatrix networking factory, that's where you're gonna decide about, okay, let me install and provision networking components onto my cloud foundational environment. So Control Tower sets up the environment and then you build on top of it by adding your networking constructs. Great. And there were a couple of questions that came across uh, about multi-cloud. So I'll, I'll, I'll address that quickly. Uh, Control Tower is, is an AWS service that builds, as, as Nevis just mentioned, the uh, account factory or builds the accounts out in AWS. Uh, the Aviatrix 
um, transit network is a multi-cloud construct. So that expands across multiple clouds. So if, for instance, you set up a, uh, a network segmentation, that network segmentation could be uh, brought across into multiple clouds and leveraged that way using the Aviatrix uh, platform. And let's see. There were a couple of pretty detailed questions. I just want to remind everybody that if we weren't able to answer your question sufficiently uh, in the in the chat window, uh, as as Abhishek mentioned, please reach out to us, and you can do that most easily by going to info at aviatrix.com, sending us an email mentioning that you were on this webinar uh, and that you have some additional questions, and we will have a solution architect reach out to you and, and set up some time to, to deep dive into uh, the solutions. Let me see if I see it. Uh, a lot of questions about whether the uh, recording will be made available. And yes, they will be, uh, we will be sending out a link to this recorded event uh, to anybody who registered for the event. So look for that in an email coming. Um, Did you guys see any questions, Nevis, that you want to bring out to everybody? Let's see. Uh, Taking a look. Oh, there were some questions about documentation. Um, our uh, Aviatrix documentation on this is available at docs.aviatrix.com. So you can find all of our documentation there. Uh, is there a specific location you would send folks uh, for control tower documentation, Davis? Sure, yeah, we, we can send them, send everyone to the AWS control tower website on AWS. I, I think that's the best location. Best way and they can, and they can navigate to that there, okay. Right. Um, There was a question about route propagation, and this is uh, whether it's using uh, the AWS Transit Gateway or the Aviatrix Transit. The uh, Aviatrix controller is what does all of the route propagation. So if new routes are propagated in from on-prem or you need to make changes uh, or you need to do any kind of traffic engineering, that's all done through the Aviatrix controller and it'll propagate the routes out to all of the route tables in the VPCs, as well as into the transit gateway or the Aviatrix transit hub. Let's see. There was a couple of questions that came from uh, MSPs uh, who want to be able to deliver this and utilize it with their uh, their customers. Uh, so in this case, uh, I would say it's a pretty detailed answer. So uh, reach out to us at info at aviatrix.com and we can, we can answer those questions for you. Um, let's see. And yeah, regarding the MSP <clears throat> question, yeah, you can certainly install um, AWS Control Tower onto your AWS environment and then install Aviatrix Cloud Controllers onto those accounts. All right. Well, with that, I think we probably answered most of the questions here. We had several online that we answered, but those I thought were good to bring up. Um, if there, there's a few open questions here, we'll try to answer those. And let's see. Okay, I'm gonna, uh, the, the, the link to the um, documentation is docs, D-O-C-S dot aviatrix.com. And then for AWS, go to the AWS Control Tower website.
and you'll be able to navigate to the documentation. Yeah, and uh, I'll just add that uh, we'll include the links to the solution documentation uh, in the email that gets sent out to uh, all those who registered. Well, here's a good question. There's uh, asking about certification. Do we need knowledge of Azure GCP uh, as well as uh, good with AWS? Um, it's always good to have knowledge about all of them. And actually, Aviatrix has a program, <clears throat> a certification program called ACE, or Aviatrix Certified Engineer, which will go into details of networking in all of the different clouds, as well as how Aviatrix uh, platform pulls a lot of that together. Uh, but for uh, one of the things that this does is it really, Aviatrix does is it abstracts a lot of the uh, detailed knowledge that you would need to have <clears throat> in each cloud. So I would suggest uh, taking a look at our ACE uh, certification classes to give you a, a good background on all of it. And Vinod, you are a certified, how can you go to the next level? Well, we have several levels. Probably the next level for you is the Aviatrix professional certification. And so go to aviatrix.com slash ACE and you'll find out more information on how to register for that. Okay, with that, I think we've reached the end of our time. Um, thank you very much. Again, reach out to us if you have any questions. Thank you very much to the presenters. Great job. Thank yeah, you very thanks much. Thanks everybody for joining. Thanks everyone.